right, welcome to Snow Canyon High School for Region 9 Baseball presented by the Boulevard. Boulevard home, making your house more like home for 50 years. And tonight's game of the week, the Cedar Reds come to town to take on the top team in Region 9. Good evening, greetings, salutations. Devin Dixon, Cannon Seacrest with you. And Cannon, uh, two teams kind of heading in different directions right now. Cedar looking for their first region win. It's been tough sledding for Coach Larson and the Reds. And the Warriors undefeated, the only team left undefeated defeated in Region 9 Baseball. They collide tonight at Warrior Field. Yeah, I mean, Cedar so far, 2-15 and 15 on the year. Not the start that they uh, were hoping for. Um, so, you know, they're hoping to get that thing back rolling and stuff. They had a good game against Desert Hills in their last matchup. Uh, well, they ended up coming out uh, just losing that one. Uh, ended 8-11, to 11, but they actually outhit the Thunder uh, 11 to 9 just had a few errors that ended up costing him the game in that one so it'll be interesting to see they probably worked a lot on their defensive side of the game because with 11 hits in their last one it looks like their bats are going it looks like they're good on the offensive side it'll be interesting to see if we can see them get it done on the defensive side you look at uh, the Warriors 14 and 3 overall number two in the RPI behind the Dixie Flyers they keep flip-flopping back and forth it'll be interesting to see what this week brings Dixie's playing Hurricane. They haven't won a region game this year either. And then, of course, Snow Cannon's got Cedar. So both the Flyers and the Warriors take care of business. It'll be interesting to see come Friday night or early Saturday morning who the number one team in the RPI is. And the number one overall seed might not be dis decided until the final week of the season because that's not – until Dixie and Snow Cannon yeah, actually play their series that final week before the state tournament. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, I, that's one that we all have our calendars marked for. We also had uh, our calendars marked for the um, state championship rerun that we had last week, which was Snow Canyon, Crimson Cliffs, and Snow Canyon came out on top in both of those. One of them was an extra inning game, and uh, that was great to watch. So, uh, yeah, mark your calendars for that Dixie game, too, because I think it's going to come down to the wire there. It will be uh, Burgess getting the nod from Coach Brad Larson in his second season as the skipper of the Reds, 0-3, uh, ERA's inflated a little bit, but this kid coming into the season, here's their guy. He's their number one. Him and Coden Lund are kind of the one-two punch on the mound, and they would love to get a good performance from Burgess tonight. On the other side, Kyson Goats will get the nod. We think and we hear Jackson Kirby's getting close. Maybe we'll pitch at some point this week, maybe start on Friday, uh, maybe coming in relief. Um, Kyson Goats, though, had a perfect game early in the season, and he's been unbelievable since Kirby's been out. Yeah, I mean, they, they have arms for sure. I mean, you saw in the game, uh, the first game against Crimson, you saw Talon Kelly come in. He ended up throwing five innings on the back half of that game, struck out, I think, 12 is what it was. So they have arms. They have guys in the bullpen and stuff. So as Kirby comes back, it'll be interesting to see how they integrate him back in because they've got arms that are throwing well right now. So you don't want to mess anything up too much, but they'll probably start going with an inning or two here and there just to kind of get him acclimated back into region ball. Yeah, and talking with Brandon Lyon, the pitch coach uh, before the game he said hey I, I do want to get my guy some rest at some point too you know uh, especially the starters goats and, and his son Andrew Lyon who had 11 strikeouts last Friday night and was really on his game and so it'll be interesting to see where he's integrated in is it the starting lineup or is it in the bullpen uh, he did throw a bullpen last weekend no setbacks for Jackson Kirby who was slated to kind of be the, the, the ace of this team coming into the season and we haven't even seen him throw an inning in a live baseball game so maybe we'll see him tonight, maybe we won't. Only time will tell. Warriors and the Reds, this is the pregame festivities built by Bucks Ace Hardware. Everything for your home, lawn, and garden. You can find it at the three Southern Utah Bucks, State Street, and Hurricane. Of course, not far from Snow Canyon here in Santa Clara or uh, the location uh, in Washington down there on South Mall Drive, Dinosaur Crossing, Think Bucks, a friendly face you can trust. That's what I love going to Bucks. They always have somebody help you find what you need quick on your way and get all your chores done and get to the baseball diamond. We got baseball coming up, uh, taking some in and out right now. The Reds are going through the pregame warm-ups. When we come back, we'll pick our Finley Subaru Star Watch. We'll take a look at a couple guys we're going to ISO in on. Also, uh, we'll get you some key to the game, all that and more when we come back on the Fan Sports Network, your local home for high school baseball and the live stream tonight. If you're listening on radio and you're headed home, I invite you to go to our YouTube channel and uh, subscribe and watch that game. Uh, KSLSports.com picking up the feed tonight as well. So and I put the link out on our socials at the Fan SN so you can find that link 
real quickly on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, whatever the case might be. He's Canna Secrets. He's going to be breaking it down all night. I'm Devin Dixon, back for more Bucks Ace Hardware pregame talk right after this timeout, 60-second break, and we'll be back to the ballpark. Discover elegance at the Awning Company. Join us at the St. George Parade of Homes this week. See our exquisite awnings featured in select homes. Elevate your outdoor space with us. Call for a free quote today. Did you know that it costs less to maintain your equipment than to repair it? Yet 90% of breakdowns are caused by system neglect. Give your heating, cooling, and plumbing the care they deserve. For all your air conditioning and plumbing needs, turn to the experts. Hey, it's Marco from Coral Canyon Golf Course inviting you to play the course with the best backdrop in Southern Utah. Make sure you get out and experience great golf for a great price at Coral Canyon. Visit CoralCanyonGolfCourse.com or call us at 435-688-1700 for your tee times. Need an appliance or two? AWP's got you. Check out the remodeled expansive showroom highlighting the cafe series with colors like matte black, matte white, and modern glass. Make your kitchen stand out. Come see the local boys at AWP across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart. Hey, welcome back to the ballpark. Glad you're with this Bucks Ace Hardware pregame show. Uh, Cannon, looking at this matchup, looking at the lineup for Snow Cannon and Cedar, who's our Finley Subaru Star Watch tonight? We'll kind of spotlight on them, and uh, we'll break it down a little bit throughout the game, keep an eye on a couple stars to watch for in this one. Yep, somebody to look out for on the side for Cedar is going to be Jacob Boyer. He's batting in their leadoff, so it's going to be – uh, a big thing for him, got, you want to get that leadoff guy on and get some runs going early. Uh, that's one thing that we haven't seen a lot of teams do to Snow Canyon is jump on them early. And uh, they kind of haven't had to had to f have any of that pressure on them early on in the game. So especially with Andrew Lyon on the mound, uh, he hasn't been hit around a lot. So if uh, Boyer can get it started early for Cedar and put some pressure on him, make Snow Canyon make some tough plays, then uh, Cedar could be putting – put in a very good spot there um, on the snow canyon side of things i mean we talked about it uh right before we went to break we got lion on the bump and i am goats, gonna goats on the bump we got goats on the bump sorry yep we got goats on the bump and goats goats has been looking really good in these past couple games we talked about his perfect game before and uh He's just he's been a great starter for Snow Canyon. Had a tough start against um, Crimson in their last week. Got taken out, I think, in the fourth inning. So he's hungry and he's ready to uh, to start tonight. 314, the numbers on Boyer. Doesn't hit for power, only three doubles, but a lot of singles. Uh, has seven RBIs, but he's the speed guy. He's the guy that kind of gets everything going. And, and you got to put pressure on the Snow Cannon staff, and that'll be Kyson Goats. You look at, you know, his statistics this year, and they're pretty good for the senior, who shot a 75, by the way, at Green Springs on Sunday. Got a round of golfing, I think, with his dad. Had an eagle on 16, he was telling me. I was talking to him in, in the pregame. Big dual sport guy. Yeah, yeah, he's a good golfer. 3-0, uh, and oh, hasn't lost this year in five appearances. 3.13 uh, ERA. And you look at Goats' to supplemental statistics, 22 and a third of work. You know, just 15 hits, 13 runs, 10 earned. Only walked five, and he struck out 35. You love that strikeout-to-walk oh, ratio. That ratio is crazy. I mean, that's what you want out of every pitcher, someone who can who can punch guys out and keep the walks down. And five, let's see, how many innings do we have here? 22 and a, and a third. 22 and a third with five five walks. That's pretty That's pretty good. You so, would have took those stats back yeah, in the day. Yeah, I definitely would have taken those stats. I, I'll switch him for uh, what I had in college, so. <laughs> Those are your Finley Subaru stars to watch tonight. A lot of other choices that you could go with Snow Canyon because they come in with a team batting average of 361. And here's the thing that's different from this year in Snow Canyon's lineup. They've seen better pitching at this point in the season than they did last year. Um, you know, going down to that tournament in Arizona, the teams they played in the preseason, they're seeing a, at least a junior college starter call his level pitcher yep. in every every game and so last year you, you, you know, I was talking with coach Harrison he said I didn't feel like we were as prepared to see the state level pitching he's like this year we've been tested earlier and more often which I think is going to bode well for us in the state tournament and I thought that was a fascinating point he made yeah and for sure and going to the back half of the season when they're going to go up against guys like Yates that's going to be huge to have seen some arms that are equivalent to him I mean I, I don't know how many guys there are that are from the left side that are up high 
high 80s, low 90s like Yates is, but um, it's definitely going to help in the Warriors' case when they get to that back half of the season and have to play against Dixie. And then in the state championship, too, as well. Some guys coming in swinging a hot bat. Uh, Damon Inns hitting 468. He'll bat in the two hole tonight. Uh, Smith, the catcher, hitting 389. Uh, Corbin Hafen, a center fielder, hitting 394. Uh, Ryder Harrison, 367. And uh, even Henderson, the senior that's, you know, was hurt. And now he's back in the lineup. He's DHing tonight. He's hitting 455 since coming off the injury. He's been red hot. Uh, got the party started last Friday in that 8-1 win over Crimson Cliffs in that rematch of last year's state championship with a two RBI double. Uh, Mikhail Swenson's hitting 468. And then other guys are, are, are hitting good, too. Cruz Seekers, 317. Andrew Lyon, 303. Um, Ledger Ship, 333. So uh, the guy they like to get going sitting below 200 right now is, is TK, Tank Kelly. And I think it's only a matter of time because this kid can swing the bat. Yeah, he can swing. I mean, he's got a couple bombs uh, this year. I think he has one or two. He's got two home runs this year. And so he'll run into a couple here and there. But you just like to see that average get up a little bit. And uh, I think, you know, it's not it's not too much to worry about right now. He, can, he definitely still has some time. So uh, it'll be interesting to see tonight if he tries to, hey, you know what, maybe I'll put a couple balls on the ground and uh, – Let's find some holes here instead of maybe going for that long ball. Intermountain Sports Performance brings you our starting lineup. Let's set the table. It's going to be uh, first for the visiting Cedar Reds. Boyer will catch and lead off. Giles in center field, bat second. Nash will play second and bat third. Coden Lund. Guy, if you've followed Cedar High, you know a lot about football player, baseball player. Uh, he is your first baseman in the cleanup spot. Bunnell is third baseman. Ludlow's in right field. Corey's the shortstop. Burgess will pitch and hit, and Leader will bat ninth and play left field. Intermountain Sports Performance, there is no off-season. Get sports-specific training for no matter what sport you play. The summer packages are available. Check them out on Instagram or give them a call and get signed up for your kids to take their game to the next level. Mikhail Swenson will uh, lead off and play right. In spat second, plays second base. Ryder Harrison in the left fielder. Cruz Seekers in the cleanup spot, playing short. Smith is the catcher in the five spot. Henderson will bat sixth as the DH. Kelly at third, batting seventh. Lyon at first base, batting eighth. And Hafen will play center field and bat ninth. With Goats on the mound, Ledger ship. We'll probably see him maybe uh, in as a speed up runner a little bit. We're going to take another uh, 90 second timeout for our national anthem. We'll be back with the Team Diato Sales keys to the game in the first pitch after this on the fan own property and want to rent it then you need the right team with 11 years of local experience a staff of over 25 employees and a 4.9 google rating aim to maximize your rental income and find quality tenants while keeping turnover low to increase your revenue and truly maintain your property learn more at redrockpropertymanagement.com create your own relaxing comfortable space boulevard home offers the guaranteed best prices on furniture appliances mattresses and more and buy with no interest financing shop boulevard home because home is who we are. Did you know that St. George News has a new app? Download the St. George News app today and stay up to date on everything happening in Southern Utah. Get instant notifications on news, weather, sports, and more. Download the app today and get your local news now. Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Inspired design. Ultra quiet operation. To you, it's a bright evolution cooling system. To us, it's the ultimate machine. All set. For the dealer nearest you, visit Bryant.com. Hey, welcome back. It's our Boulevard home game of the week. What are they doing, Cannon? We got a couple, a Cedar player and a Snow Cannon player doing a little paper, rock, scissors. Uh, I think they were doing, uh, when they do the national anthem, sometimes guys like to stay and see who can stand out on the line for as long as they can. So I've seen, uh, I'm not sure who this home plate umpire is, but I've seen him do a couple times. He's like, hey, guys, we're not going to do that. Come play rock, paper, scissors. Whoever wins the game of rock, paper, scissors can 
call themselves the champion of standing on the line. <laughs> <laughs> the nuances of baseball, the superstitions yep. of baseball, just <laughs> it falls in that category a little bit. All right, let's take a look at our team, D Auto Sales Keys to the Game. Get a used car, truck, or SUV. Great selection, quality, price. 488 East St. George Boulevard at TeamDAutoSales.com. Cannon first for the visiting Reds. What do they got to do? The Reds, like I said, uh, against Desert Hills, they had some airs, so they're going to want to clean that up a little bit against this Snow Canyon team. You can't be making airs because they're going to make you pay. They got a lot of guys who can swing it, so you're going to want to tighten up the defense a little bit, and also, when you get guys in scoring position, you can't leave them out there. You can't strand them. Because you might not get that many opportunities. Exactly. And, and with how good Goats has been all year, um, you really might not get that many opportunities. Keys to the game for the Warriors. The Warriors, I mean, just keep swinging it. They got the whole lineup swinging it so far I mean in their last game they had really good uh, production from the back half so if they can keep that going into this one they should be pretty good all right we are ready to go in our boulevard home game of the week and first pitch is missing just away for ball one is goats ready already with pitch two rocks fires and a swing and a miss that is Boyer the catcher the leadoff guy who we picked as our Finley Subaru star watch player tonight to keep an eye on and the count quickly to one and one goats ready the right-handed delivery called strike of the knees goats he he works quick so uh the reds better be ready to hit and he throws a lot of strikes so if they can just jump on him jump on that fastball before he starts uh, beating you up with that slider. And he's not a guy that's in the 90s that's overpowering you, but he nibbles on the corners, he hits his location, and there's a swing and a miss, and the 36th K of the season for Goatsy. Yeah, I mean, like you said, he's not a guy that's going to come up and throw, you know, 90, 92 miles an hour like some of these other arms in Region 9, but he does have a great mix with his changeup and slider, and it makes his fastball look that much harder. Next batter is Giles, the center fielder. Giles will take that first one high for ball one. Giles this year just hitting 241, just a junior crew. Hard worker, one of the leaders, though, on this Cedar team as an underclassman. And Goats misses 2 and the count. The 2-0 pitch, big cut there. He was thinking yard. And a swing and a miss, two and one. That was a good high fastball there. You set the eyes up. Now you can go with a slider down if you want. Checks the swing, fouls it straight back. It's a fabulous Freddy's foul ball. Goes in hard with another fastball. Kaisa must be feeling 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 some velo tonight. Yeah, and, and it looks mid 80s, right? Yep. It's good. It's it's not like it's you know he's a senior now, mm -hmm. getting bigger and stronger and. They, they, they have definitely needed an arm like Kyson Goats with Kirby on the shelf and a swing and a foul straight back. And a count will stay at two and two. Tonight's game brought to you by the City of St. George Recreation Center. Summer classes and summer sports programs. Sign-ups are now available. Just go to sgcityrec.org and check it all out. Get your kids signed up. The swing. No swing. He checks and doesn't go and caught looking and that's back-to-back -back k's i'll put that one down backwards in the books cannon yeah that was a good pitch i mean set him up real well with that sequence was going high up with the fastball and he probably thought how oh, he's gonna break me off a slider here once goes outside corner with the fastball for a nice uh, strike three there hayden smith calling the game behind the dish for coach Reed Seacrest, I, I don't know if Coach appreciates it when I call him the longest tenured head coach in Region 9, but he is just ahead of Danny Ibsen at Dixie. I tell him every day he's getting old. Yeah. <laughs> and there's a swing and a drive into the alleyway, but lifted high enough that racing over there, no trouble at all as Swenson makes that, excuse me, that is uh, the left fielder, Ryder Harrison, that makes the grab for out number three. So Nash flies out to left field and we played half an inning no runs no hits nobody left on base no score here on the wilkinson's house of lighting scoreboard warriors they'll send the top of the order up when we come back swinson ince and harrison on the fan sports network we are utah's financial outfitter and we're here when it's time for your business to climb higher Cash Valley Bank, mountains away. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Your child's sports journey starts with the City of St. George Recreation. From their first steps on the quarter field to becoming a star player, our youth sports programs are here to develop talents and teamwork skills. So get out and play. Check out all the sports and get signed up at sgcityrec.org. 
We love giving back to our community, and over the years, we have provided vehicles for families in need, supported local charities, and helped train our first responders. Dealer Collision, your place for collision repair. As a local business owner, it's important to get the word out about your business. More people equals more revenue for you. Get your business in front of over 160,000 people in southern Utah each week with St. George News. Contact St. George News today. Back at Snow Canyon High School, Devin Dixon. Cannon Seekers coming at you tonight on the Fan Sports Network YouTube page, kslsports.com, and of course on the radio here in St. George on 99.5 or 95.3. Coming at you in Cedar City tonight on 93.1. We're everywhere, Cannon, for this Region 9 showdown. And Mikhail Swenson, big, strong, right-handed hitter, will step in. And, and you don't really, you look at Mikhail and you see how big and strong he is. He's not your prototypical high school leadoff hitter. But boy, he could be a great college leadoff hitter, the way he's swinging the bat. Coming in tonight, he is one of the leaders on this team in batting average as Mikhail comes in hitting 468. And he's got 14 RPIs this year. Yeah, I mean, uh, Snow Canyon has a lot of, of good good hitters in their lineup. So, I mean, somebody's got to hit leadoff. Somebody's got to hit ninth. So, uh, might as well be uh, Mikhail Swenson over here. Burgess on the bump. Mention 0-3. Four appearances, ERA, they've got to him a little bit, which can happen. It's inflated to 10.50. Comes out firing, though. Count now even one and one. And that last pitch just down low. Two and one the count now on the leadoff hitter, Swenson. Burgess just missing outside. It's early, but you don't want to get behind hitters, especially uh, not the Snow Canyon Warriors. Swing and a miss, and the count now full. Big cut there from Swenson, huh? Yeah, that was he was that was definitely a three-one swing, Devin. Well, the wind is blowing out tonight, so we could see some balls leave the yard. Mm -hmm. You know, Cannon's only hit seven home runs this year. There's a hot shot, and that's going to be laced in the center field for a sharply hit single as he'll put the brakes on. And that's a leadoff single. That's exactly what you want out of your leadoff guy if you're Coach Seacrest. Yep. And, uh, yeah, we were, you were talking earlier about uh, Snow Canyon only having, I think it was seven home runs, and five of those were hit in the first game. So, I mean, they've definitely slowed down since that first one. Here is Damon Nance, 468, the number coming into tonight. And he'll take that one low for ball one. Nance, the senior, coming right out of basketball into baseball, and he hasn't missed a beat. Got 18 RBIs, five doubles, two triples this year. He'll step off, throw over to first, Swenson back in time. Yeah, he's swinging it well this year, and he shot the three ball well, pretty well, too. Yep, got all the way uh, into the semifinals before bowing out to was it Cottonwood. And they shot right up the middle past the shortstop. Swinson's going to go to third. Ince is going to round to second. And runners on second, third with nobody out. And the Warriors already got a little something brewing here in the bottom of the first inning. Yeah, we see this on the replay right here. Just got under the glove of Corey over there at short. And, uh, I mean, not an air, but uh, definitely a hit. But that's a tough play. That's one you want as a, as a pitcher. And you'd love to see... Out there in center field, Giles maybe cut that to second so you don't let Inns get to second base. Instead, the throw not in time to third and Inns easily down to second. So two runners in the scoring position. That first pitch now to Ryder Harrison. Yeah, and that's a big thing. A lot of outfielders want to be that guy that throws somebody dude out, some guy out uh, at a base. But um, you got to hit your cutoff, man, because if not, then something like that happens. You end up not throwing the guy out at third, and now you got a guy at second and third right now. Ryder Harrison on an 0-1 pitch, fouls that one out of play. A fabulous Freddy's foul ball. Fueled up, washed down, get big gas savings with every car wash, 20 cents off per gallon gas at the pump. So now Harrison got shortened up here, protect the plate, chopper, and that's pulled foul again down the first baseline. Good job by Ryder to, to spoil that one off. Fastball inside, just smacked it down the line. He wasn't going to be able to do a whole lot with it as he was in his two-strike approach. So just foul it off and get the next one. Ryder Harrison, I think, has one of the smoothest, best-looking swings, and yet 
rumor has it, he's not planning on going to play college baseball at this point in time. And I think he's got next level potential, don't you? Oh, he, he definitely does. I mean, I think I think Division One potential. I mean, this kid, he can swing it. He plays a good left field too. So, I mean, uh, it'll be interesting to see what he ends up doing. He's still got some time as he gets into one. And this one's going back towards the wall. And this one's going to hop off the fence on the fly. It's going to be a two RBI single by Ryder Harrison. And the Warriors take the 2-0 lead over Cedar. Good piece right there by Ryder. See him get into it. Good line drive. 0-2-2. Oh, two, two. Uh, just too good of a pitch uh, by Burgess to, to Ryder in the three hole. You want to keep that ball down or make him chase. You don't even really need to throw it in the zone. Just a uh, good piece of hitting there by Ryder with that uh, two out single. They will bring in a, a pinch runner. That'll be McGarvero. McGarvero is a sophomore, so bringing a little more, a little more speed on the the base pass there. And, and, and that's about the only way Coach Seekers can get some guys in the lineup some nights because they are so loaded with talent. There's just not enough innings to go around. They got, what, 15, 16 seniors on this Warrior roster. Yeah. Yep. I mean, a few of them are, a few of them are POs, but, um, I mean, their, their guys have been doing a really – their starters have been doing a really good job too uh, as well. So, I mean, it's hard to, it's hard to get everyone some playing time. And, uh, but, you know, when you're winning games, it's kind of tough to, to – talk about hey you know by the way yo go ahead what do you think of these city connect jerseys snow canyons rocking tonight they kind of have the city connect look to them kind of the alt jerseys to get the the white with kind of the the southern utah red rock look on them i think i think they're cool i think i mean it doesn't have there's not a whole lot to do with snow canyon colors but i i like the city connect you know you see a lot of well, kind of look like snow teams. canyon park a little bit yeah, those yeah, red rocks yeah, yeah. You, you see a lot of major league teams do it, and so I think it's kind of a fun, uh, a fun way to way to do your jerseys. I mean, he gets a new, my dad gets a new jersey every other year. It feels like so. I mean, probably nice to see some some different colorways. Well, and this is only the third time they've worn them this season. This is game number 17, so keeping them clean. Mm -hmm. uh, although I will say this, uh, when Kyson goes through the perfect game, as Cruz Seekers fouls this one up, is it going to stay in play, drifting down the line, and it is a foul ball, and Seekers will have new life. He, they were wearing these jerseys. They are 2-0, and or 3-0. and They have not... 2 and 0. This is the third time. They have not lost the first two games in these jerseys. So kind of the good luck jersey. Oh, yeah, you got if I'm Kaisen, I'm saying, "Hey, we're wearing these every game. If I throw a perfect game in those, I'm that's the jersey I'm pitching in for the rest of my time here at Snow Camp." <laughs> they are I got I kind of dig them. They're good looking got the the orange red rocks and then they got the little blue on the mountains like a pine valley in the backdrop with the white pants and the white tops around the chest to the shoulder still got the traditional green sc batting helmets which really don't match but i don't care yeah maybe well, next year you'll get some new batting some, helmets some orange helmets match or something yeah. yeah they could do navy they could do navy helmets yeah that'd be that, that, that would look a little bit more here's clean. what i here's what i want i want some orange pants on them I want some all, like, that dirt red, orange, red rock colored pants all the way down. And I want them to rock the stirrups. With yeah. that, with the, with, how about a little tin of the blue stirrups or just a white stirrups would look yeah. clean. Yep. I agree. One and two to count now on Crew Seekers. And he'll check his swing, and it's now two and two. Is Crew Seekers, this is the fourth of – Coach Seeker's youngest sons, which you know a thing or two about. A little bit. Is, is he the best high school player at this point in his career than his three brothers? Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't know what my other brothers would would say um, on a live broadcast, but I'll, I'll say it. I, I think he's, he's definitely better than I was. Um, I mean, he, he's got a lot of help. It, it, it definitely helps to be the youngest guy um, coming up in a family. I mean, he, he got to be around all of us and uh, kind of see how our careers went and kind of learn from us. So, I mean, I definitely think that that he's put it together a lot more than any of us did when we were in high school. High and Burgess loses Seacrest and. And Seacrest will be aboard drawing the walk. And now runners on first and second. Still nobody out. So so Brock's the oldest in Brogan. Goes, or no, then you. It goes Brogan, me, and then Brock and, then and Brock the crew. And the yep. crew. Okay. Got to get, keep that straight. There's a lot of us. But and, no. and none of you played catcher like your pops. No, <laughs> no, none of us were catchers. We were all uh, we were all infielders. I, once I went to college, I played a little bit of outfield, and then I went and 
pitched, which is what I mainly did. My dad was a little bit upset at that because my dad's a he's a big big hitting guy, and he wasn't he wasn't a huge fan of me pitching. But I was like, hey, you know what? I don't I don't swing it as good as everyone else does in our family, so I got to figure out a different way. <laughs> yeah, you just want to get on the field, right? Yeah, exactly. Oh, one the count. Here's Smith taking high, a little chin music, maybe a little bit inside. And now we're just got to find the strike zone here. 2 nothing Warriors on a 2-RBI single by Ryder Harrison. They pinch run for him. McGarvero is out there at second. And Hayden Smith, who comes into this game tonight, hitting it at a clip of right at 389. 54 bats, 21 hits, 17 RBIs, four doubles, two home runs, tied for the lead on this team with Tank Kelly, who also has two. And a swing and a foul tip and got him. And there's the first out of the game for Burgess. Much needed strike out there as Smith couldn't find it. Yeah, good pitch there. Just reached back for that fastball. Smith was a little bit late on the one before, so really reached back and tried to get a little bit of extra velo on there and uh, got it by him. Here is Darius Henderson. Give them another bat in the lineup since he has come off of an early season injury in seven games played. He's hitting 455. It'll be interesting to see when he gets to, you know, 16, 17 games to see where that batting average settles in. But he knows how to handle the lumber. Yeah. And, and it's actually lumber because his bat is wood. He swings a wood bat, which not very which many awesome. high school kids do. So it's kind of a funny thing. But, I mean, he's he's been putting up numbers with it. So why change? Yeah, most people have the BB core bats nowadays, right? Yeah, most guys swing. I mean, I know if I was in high school, I'd be swinging, uh, swinging metal. But. It's definitely just a feel thing. Who, what college conferences still use wood bats? Is there any out there? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, Salt Lake Salt Lake still uses uh, wood, so um, Salt Lake, CSI, and then a lot of the Arizona schools still swing wood as well. And then once they go on, that's just – that's just junior college baseball. All Division One, all Division Two, II, Division Three, all of they, uh, at least to my knowledge, everyone swings metal there. But there's a few junior college conferences that will swing wood up until they play uh, for their divisional. A swing and a drive, and this one's going to be twisting down the line on a run and can't make the catch. A sliding dive attempt, kind of a sliding attempt to catch that, and it looked like it actually hit the glove out there, and and maybe he had a chance to make a play, but it was cutting away from the left fielder, and couldn't squeeze it there. That was leader out there, and so now Henderson's got a chance to go back and swing it again with a 2-2 count. Burgess checking the runner. Comes to the play with the delivery, and that one inside, ball three, full count. Yeah, I mean, going back to that last play out there in left field, that's a tough play because you got that lefty slice on the ball. The, ball. the ball's moving towards out of play, and so you're running trying to make that play as the ball's moving away from you as well. So, tough play. And a swing and a drive, and it's a grounder to first, to throw to second, not in time. They do get one out by touching the back, but they can't get the double play. And the throwing error is going to allow one run to score, and the Warriors now lead it three to nothing. I think what happened here is Henderson hit a line drive. I don't know if we caught it on the replay. It's a line, was it a ground ball Chopper. or a line drive? And oh, okay. It touched the bag, but then the throw gets in a center field. Okay. So it's going to be E3 on the throw. That's how I would score that. And the second out. And it'll be an unearned run there. Uh, Kelly now will step in. TK trying to get it going a little bit. Can see it from up here, rocking no undershirt. Got the buttons down. Well, it's, it's finally warm again yeah. in the STG. You know, temperatures in the 70s today. Got to take advantage of it. Last week was pretty chilly. Temperatures were down in the mid 50s, the low 50s, and we had some precipitation. And it finally, it feels like spring. It's taking a while. Yeah, it might get colder as the night goes on. We might see him throw on a long sleeve, but right now it does feel pretty good out there. At TK. Trying anything to change it up and, and, and get the bats awoken. 
And he checks his swing, and that's a strike anyway. Says the home plate umpire. And now two and one, two and two, excuse me. Good pitch there on the outside corner. I don't know. I think it probably would have been a strike regardless of the check swing. I think you're right. And two, two, he checks that. And they'll peel it out, and he did not go. And I think he did not go as far on that check swing as the previous. Mm -hmm. That's a good that's a good breaker by Burgess there. I mean, starts away. Talon's expecting a fastball after he just checked his swing on the last one. So he throws him a slider and that's a that's a good take as well. And that one fought off and he fooled him. That was an off speed pitch he was out in front of, but he just got a piece. Yeah, I mean if you're keeping Kelly off balanced, just keep throwing it until uh until he gets himself out. That's that's what I'd be doing if I was Burgess. Keep throwing the slider because he's not putting a great swing on it, so just stay with it. Full count pitch coming. Warriors have already played a three here in the bottom of the first inning. And breaking ball that just didn't have a snap to it. And there's a pretty good bat there from Tank Kelly as he draws the base on balls. That's the second walk drawn off of Burgess in this bottom of the first inning. And now Andrew Lyon will step in. I was here on the Fan Sports Network last Friday. 11 Ks, terrific on the bump. He didn't hit, so we saw him pitch well last time out. Actually, the last two times out, he's been really good. And he'll uh, try to get the bats going a little bit. Comes in tonight, 303 on the average. Yeah, and it can be it can be tough when you're not uh, when you're not hitting every every game. You know, they they give him a night off from from swinging it when he pitches, so he can focus on pitching. And so it can be tough to get to get rolling and uh, keep your your bats nice. But I mean, he's done a pretty good job hitting 303. First pitch swinging, and that one's popped up right field down the line, and that is going to be caught. So Lyon. Fouls it up in the air high and a good running catch for out number three. But not before the Warriors get three runs on two hits. On one air, they do leave one on base. And after one full inning of baseball here on the Fan Sports Network, it's 3-0 on the Wilkinson scoreboard. Back after this 60-second timeout. Fabulous Freddy's is the local's choice for a full-service car wash. It's fast. Have your car washed in just 20 minutes or less. Fabulous Freddy's always keeps it clean inside and out with two Southern Utah locations as well as in Vegas, Lehigh, and Sandy. Remember when Down East was all scratch and dent furniture? Your go-to for dorm rooms, kids' rooms, and first homes? Well, the times have changed, and Down East has changed with you. Down East is proud to offer our beautiful collection of high-quality furniture designed to elevate your space and make a statement. From stylish sofas and dining tables to cozy bedroom collections. If you're starting fresh or looking to upgrade, Down East has everything you need to create the home you'll love. The Fan Sports Network is your home for local sports. Catch the drive with Devin Dixon from 7 to 9. And from the bleachers with Caden Foremaster and Mark Musgrave from 4 to 6. Plus, Utah Tech and high school sports live on the radio and streaming on thefansportsnetwork.com. Hey, welcome back, everybody. High school baseball here on the Fan Sports Network brought to you by Mountainland Supply. We'll be picking a defensive play in the game. Mountainland Supply featuring Bryant Southern Utah's premier heating and cooling system for your home or commercial property. Bryant, whatever it takes. And we'll also uh, be taking a look at our Finley Superstar of the game and the energy play of the game tonight. We're looking for that. And how about that catch right there on that fly? I had to cover a lot of ground in foul territory. I actually couldn't see if he dove or not because the, uh, the, the, the clubhouse here, there's another building that kind of blocks me down the right field line. Cannon, could you, could you see if that was one of those energy scooters coffee plays? He didn't lay out for it, but it, he, did, he did range uh, quite a ways for it. So, I mean, he was playing in the right center field gap and he went a long way, caught it out in foul territory. So, I mean, it was a good play. Uh, extra base hits tonight. We've already had one brought to you by Coral Canyon Golf Course. If you're thinking about Masters Week this week and you're itching to play some golf in between watching some of Augusta's coverage, get on uh, on the phone or get on Coral Canyon's website and book a tee time. They've got the uh, local special $75 after 1 p.m. You get 18 holes with cart, with range balls. So uh, and you got to plan ahead a little bit. Busy week. A lot of people want to get out and swing the sticks. Weather's getting really nice and warm. 688-1700, the number if you want to give them a call right now. That's 435-688-1700. 
So the Warriors did score three, and they sent eight batters to the plate. Now, Kyson Goats put Boyer, Giles, and Nash down in order. So this is Coden Lunt, the first baseman, and the cleanup hitter. And already, after fouling that last pitch, he is down in the count 0-2. That one low for ball one. Yeah, so. not wasting any time. Jumps on, jumps on it early. Two strikes. We'll see if he can finish him off here. And he does. The yeah. high fastball working for him tonight. There's another K. That is the third Goats K of the game. And here is Bunnell, the third baseman. Bunnell trying to get a little something going for the Reds offensively, trailing 3 0. And the 1 0 pitch, that one in for a called strike to the knees. Count now 1 and 1. Good fastball there. Just painted his spot on that one. And there's a swing and a drive into the center field alleyway. Right fielder coming over. It's going to be the right fielder going back near the warning track and making the catch. That's Mikhail Swenson. Got into it a little bit here. This one was a little bit scary. We got a little bit of wind blowing out towards right center field. So that's going to be the place that you want to hit it tonight if you're looking to get it go, uh, go yard. And uh, it just carried a little bit, got out to the warning track, but they were able to fly it down for the second out. A two up, two down here for Goats. And then there's a pitch, and it's the first hit of the game. This one's laced in the center field. Good job jumping on it by Ludlow, the right fielder. And for the first time tonight, the Reds have a base runner, Cannon. Yep, and we'll see if they can build off. But they got two outs, so it's going to be uh, kind of a little bit tough. But, I mean, it's always nice to see somebody on first base when you don't have any hits. So uh, we'll see if they can bring them around here with two outs. Swing and a miss. This is Corey. Corey, the shortstop, comes in for the Reds and Coach Larson. As a sophomore, he's just, he's in a pretty good clip for a young sophomore, 263, the batting average coming into this game. Yeah, a couple of young guys on this uh, Cedar Reds lineup. I mean, Snow Canyon full of a lot of seniors. We also have a few teams that are pretty young, like uh, Cedar and uh, Pineview as well. Got some pretty young, promising talent. Desert Hills. Region 9. Desert Hills They have well. one senior on their entire team. A lot of juniors. Yeah. But only going to lose one player next year. So the Thunder in that category as well, as you mentioned. It's just another wave of talent coming in every year in Region 9. Again, 10 of the last 11 seasons, a state champion. You got to go back to the 2013 season, 2014 season when Grantsville won the state championship. That's the last time somebody not a Region 9 team won a state title. Mm -hmm. And you got to go back even further if you're going to go to a team where, or a state championship where a Region 9 team wasn't even a part of the state championship game. Because I think I think it was Desert Hills that played against Grantsville in that one. I don't even know. I was there the for that. Time. I remember it, but I don't, I'm trying to remember the opponent. I have to look it up to facts, check it to be accurate. I want to say Desert Hills. Don't uh, don't come at me, but I'm pretty sure it was. That one low, and it's full count. Slider had a lot of break to it. That's uh, the most break I've seen on Kyson Slider tonight. Here goes Ludlow, a little hit and run, and it gets through. And Ludlow's going to go to third, back-to-back -back hits for the Reds with runners on. No, he's going to put on the brakes and stop a second, so no runners on the corners. And a little rally stop, two-out rally. Stop by, fuel up, grab a snack at a local rally stop. Reds didn't want to risk trying to get runners on the corners there. So the force at any bag in play here for Goats with two outs. And this is what you talked about is one of our team, the auto sales keys to games. Is Cedar's got to come up with clutch hits with runners in scoring position, and that's the situation they've got right now here in the top of the second, already trailing 3 nothing. Yep, put it together a little bit. Had two outs, got two singles. We'll see if they can put it together and finish it off right here and uh, get a couple guys to touch home plate. That one low. Goats, even with runners on base, Cannon, working quickly. Mm-hmm. I mean, he slowed a little bit, don't get me wrong, but not as slow as others I've seen this year in Region 9. 1-1 one, one pitch, and a shot through, and that's going to be in the left. They're going to put the brakes on Ludlow. And I, I don't know, man. I mean, 
it's it's hit hard and you, you don't want to test the arm out there in left field the rider harrison but you, you haven't won a region game you're down three nothing you've got three hits in a row i would have been tempted to send him yeah i i think i would have sent him as well i mean it would have been a close play at the plate it would have been had to, had to have been a good throw from harrison out in the left uh excuse me uh not harrison that ship out in left ship's actually um he's actually uh playing in the field for Harrison. I believe Harrison is Okay. Is it an, how does how does that work? Is that an extra hitter? Well, Ryder was out there earlier, wasn't he? I don't When I got the lineup, it was listed Ryder and left, but you're right. You that know, is Ledger ship. You're absolutely maybe 100%. He, was, he Ryder pinch got ran. pinch ran. Yep, that's exactly what happened. Ryder got pinch ran over there at first and so maybe they went with ship out in the outfield. Is Ryder nursing a little something? Uh, I didn't see I didn't see it see him limping or anything so I'm not too sure but that would that oh, would be my guess I don't even see him in the dugout right now do you now I, I take a quick glance down there I don't see number 19 I don't hmm we'll check on that two and two the count by the way as you're back to the top of the order in Boyer. Oh no, this is Leader, excuse me. This is the number nine hitter, Leader, and got him. Leader strikes out. That is strikeout number four for Kyson Goats, and he gets out of it. He gives up three runs, but they strengthen. Everyone loves local sports and, of course, loves ice cream. And the best ice cream on the planet is Handel's Homemade Ice Cream. Open late every day of the week with dozens of delicious flavors. So after your favorite team wins, head over to Handel's to celebrate with locations in St. George, Layton, and Woods Cross. Red Rock Real Estate has over 200 professional realtors in the St. George area that specialize in the local market. Whether you're buying your dream home, looking for an investment property, or want to sell your home for the highest amount, the Red Rock Real Estate team is here to assist you. Get started now by visiting Red Rock Real estate.com don't miss our big anniversary sale at patio furniture we're offering the biggest savings of the year from umbrellas to sofa set to accessories don't miss out on our anniversary sale from february 15th through the 24th visit our new showroom today well in the break we were checking on snow canyon's rider harrison and he has been lifted and um, apparently, maybe a little uh, little tweak of the, the leg or the hamstring or something is what we're hearing. So don't know if we'll see Ryder Harrison the rest of the night. He's got the two RBI hit right now, but uh, he definitely got pinched ran for. When he was running the first base, you, you kind of wonder if, you know, he tweaked an ankle, aggravated a hamstring or something of that nature. And I'm sure that's what it was because uh, if we go back to his hit, he hit the ball off the right center field wall and stayed at first. So he might have felt something and just held up there at first. So uh, not good, not good for the Warriors. No, they need him healthy. One of the stars of this SC team. Corbin Hafen swinging a hot bat. Leading off here at the bottom of the second inning. Warriors up by three. Corbin, 394 hitter. Good play appearance the other night. The bottom of the order had a lot of production last Friday in that 8-1 win over Crimson Cliffs. Yeah, I mean, they, they swung it well. Uh, like, it just seemed like whenever they got somebody on. And there is a rip shot into right for a leadoff single for Hafen. It just seems like whenever they got somebody on, they were scoring. So, well, I mean, they basically have done that tonight, too. They had three hits, now four. Um, and it'll be it, – we got to wait and see if uh, hey, they can get Hafen around to score as that's a great start to the uh, bottom of the second here. Here's Mikhail Swenson. The one surprise when you look at the stats is Swenson no dingers yet. Only a matter of time, right? 
He, I could be wrong. And I swear he hit one against. He does um, have one. He has yeah, one. He hit one. He hit one against Crimson, so it took him a while. Yeah, but you're he right. Did get Last one week, Crimson. Tuesday, a game I was not at, but I remember. I do recall you telling me that now. Mm-hmm. My mistake. It was a big. It was a big home run too. It was in. Uh, I it, believe it was to knock it, it down to. I think a two run lead. For well, they were trailing seven to four going into the seventh, mm-hmm. and then they had a rally for three. So that was part of the the rally, I would surmise. Yeah, I think that's what started the rally. Gotcha. But Swenson's is not going to sit on one for long. You got to feel it. And the wind is blowing out a little bit tonight, but it has settled. But it was blowing kind of out of the southwest, which is kind of uh, right out there towards center field. But as I look at the American and the state flag, it's just kind of fluttering right now. So it, maybe a little helping wind, but not much. Yeah, not a ton. You got to get it to get it out of here. Although it's not a big dimension at the ballpark here at Snow Canyon High School. It is a hitter's paradise. Yeah, for sure. I mean, uh, the gaps and center field are the places you want to live if you're playing here. Down the lines, it gets a little bit deeper. You got to you gotta have some big boy power to get it out in left, uh, left and right field. But left center to right center, that's the sweet spot, and that's where you want to stay if you're going to uh, get one out of this ballpark. One and two the count after a fabulous Freddy's foul ball off the bat of Mikhail Swenson. And a high fastball got him and down on strike. Swinson becomes the second victim on the K punch out. Brought to you by SNS Mechanical. It looked like a slider or a curveball on the replay. Started high and stayed high. I'm not uh, not too sure what Swinson saw out of the hand, but um, that ball was up. Yeah, it was kind of a you, – you could tell he was thinking about checking it, but just couldn't. Yeah. It had already committed. Here is Ince. Damon Ince, first pitch fouled out of play down the third baseline. I want to thank Handel's Homemade Ice Cream, best ice cream on the planet. Now open late on the weekends, 10 on the weekdays. Friday, Saturdays open till 11. We'll get you some cookie dough, the Graham Central Station. You got a favorite flavor at Handel's Homemade Ice Cream? This is going to sound weird. I know a lot of people aren't a big fan of it, but mint, mint chocolate chip. Is I love I mint chocolate with. chip. Everyone says it tastes like toothpaste. I, I love it. Yeah. It's the, it's the best ice cream you can get. Who? I have never heard somebody <laughs> say that, and they have never been to Handles, obviously. Yeah, it Handles, Handles I, is definitely I have never tier. had a ice cream that I haven't liked at Handles, to be honest. They had a peach, seasonal peach flavor. And I'm not a huge peach guy, but I, I like a peach mm-hmm. once in a while. It was delicious. Haven gets on top of that one, but lifts it right into left field for an easy fly out. And the first out, or the second out of the inning. So after the leadoff single by Hafen, Swinson and Ince not able to do anything. And now Ryder Harrison is not going to bat. So whatever he injured, he is not, he's done done it looks like tonight. His ledger ship will get his first AB of the game. Ledger though, we kind of talk about in the pregame. He, he's not in the lineup because Goats is on the mound, but he has been really solid. He's a junior. He's one of the juniors on this team. Hitting 333. Three doubles, one triple, five RBIs. <laughs> when you got a guy like that coming off your bench, you know you, got, you know you got a pretty decent lineup. No question. Birds is trailing 3 nothing, trying to... Induce maybe a ground ball out, and he does. They'll flip it over to second, and it's a 4-3 put out, and that'll do it for the home half of the second inning. No runs on one hit and one left on base, and we've played two full innings. Warriors lead the Reds 3-0 here on the Fan Sports Network and the Wilkinson scoreboard. House of Jump is Southern Utah's only indoor trampoline park and your only place to jump, dunk, and dodge. Head on over to our house, the House of Jump. First Ace Hardware is conveniently located in St. George on the corner of Bluff Street and St. George Boulevard with 30,000 square feet of lawn and garden, paint, tools, fabrics, sporting goods, and the most complete nut and bolt section in town. First General Store, the big Ace store on Bluff and on Main in Cedar City. This cheesesteak is so freshly grilled, you can still hear it sizzling. I can hear it too. Me too. Actually, it's the... Oh, cheesesteak? 
Grill. Grill right in front of you. It's a Jersey Mike's thing. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Devin Dixon, Cannon Seekers, Boulevard Home, making your house more like home for 50 years. Stop by, shop smart, shop at the Boulevard Home. Uh, we do have a final score today. Uh, Desert Hills bye week this week, not playing region, but they have a two-game set up in Provo against the Bulldogs. Today, that game has already won final, and 4-2, to two, Provo has beaten the Thunder. Thunder entered this week number three in the RPI in the state in 4A. Provo was number 10. So that's a big win for Provo at home. They will play again tomorrow, an afternoon game as well. Of course, Snow Canyon comes in at number two. Dixie is number one. Crimson enters this week sixth in the RPI. Pineview eighth. Pineview's got a one nothing lead on Crimson. We'll have that game on Friday night, the rematch between the Panthers and the Mustangs from Crimson Cliffs for you here on the Fan Sports Network. By the way, Cedar comes in 19th in the RPI tonight. 19th. But a win over Snow Canyon, number two team, would help their RPI dramatically. But trailing 3 nothing right now. Did get three hits in a row, but couldn't do anything with them last inning and left the bases loaded. Mm -hmm. Yep, and I and looking at it now, uh, definitely should have definitely should have sent him. But <laughs> yeah. I'm sure the coach was hoping, uh, hey, you know what, we're going to get another hit right here. But uh, didn't end up happening, and now they are – Still stuck at zero right now. Apologize, I was running down the RPI, but that was a quick strikeout. Strikeout number five for Kyson Goats. Boyer goes down swinging. Here's Giles with one away. Outside, ball one. And Goats looking good. He's mixing up his pitches a lot, and uh, it's making that fastball so dangerous. He's gotten a lot of strikeouts with that fastball, the high fastball um, to be exact, and uh, he's really working off his slider. Really well. Good analysis on goats, and there's a good pitch for a framed up strike, one and two. What What is your thoughts? Would you you the, the RPI was not around when you played high school baseball here at Snow Can High School, but what's your take on the RPI the last couple of years since this went into effect? And there's another K for goats to hang on the board, an SNS mechanical strikeout. Yeah, I think I think the RPI is great. I mean, there's a whole bunch of stuff that I'm not 100% sure on how everything is ranked as and stuff. So, um, but I think it's good when you're going into um, the state the state tournament that everything is kind of you it's it's all based off the RPI. So your rankings and stuff. So when you're going to play these up north teams, you're really getting I think a better look at. The, the, the this, one seed and then the whatever, the eight or ten seed, whatever. The simplest way to look at the RPI is play good teams and win good teams, and your ranking is going to take care of itself. Mm -hmm. There's a swing and a shot to short. Seacrest bobbles it, collects it, throws it in time for the 6-3 put out, and Nash goes down on the ground out. No runs, no hits, nobody left on base. And through two and a half, Warriors still lead 3 nothing. We'll continue our conversation on the RPI when we come back on the Fan Sports Network in our Boulevard Home Game of the Week. When it comes to your child's teeth, Dr. Cody and his experienced staff at Johnson Pediatric Dentistry are game changers. So when it comes to checkups, a toothache, or any problem with your kid's teeth, call experienced veteran Dr. Cody Johnson at Johnson Pediatric Dentistry, 628-0511. Hey, it's Luke with Uting Associates and American Family Insurance. At Uting Associates, we love insurance so you don't have to. With a quick call, we can get you an instant quote with the right coverages. My team of licensed agents are ready to help you with better insurance from American Family. Give us a call at 435-251-9102. Nets on Fire is the place to hoop in Southern Utah. Elevate your game with group or individual training with elite coaching. Hustle to NetsOnFire.org to learn more and see why so many rising stars hoop at Nets. Nets on Fire, building champions on and off the court. At Intermountain Sports Performance, we've been training athletes from Logan to St. George for over 20 years, and we guarantee your athlete will improve speed, agility, explosive power, and reduce the risk of injury while working with the most qualified team in all of Utah. Call 435-251-2299 to find the location nearest you. 
3 0 Snow Canyon here on the Fan Sports Network. If you're listening on radio, you want to watch this game as we head to the bottom of the third inning, just go to our YouTube channel, search the Fan Sports Network or KSLSports.com. Devin Dixon, Cannon Seacrest with you. As always, we'll be naming Appliance Wholesalers Plus Playmaker Play of the Game. Ryder Harrison probably has the play of the game right now, a two RBI single, but it did come with him tweaking something, and he left this game and has not returned, Cannon. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's a it's a it's a big person to lose for the Warriors. Um, that's the heart of your lineup. Your three hole hitter has been swinging it well, and uh, you hate to see him go down. You just hope it's not serious. Yeah, exactly. I mean, and and right now it's the middle of the season. You're still gearing up to 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 finish out the season, heading into the state tournament. And maybe stuff. it is just precautionary. Yeah, I felt a little something tweak. Let's, exactly. Uh, coach say, hey, let's 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 rest that. Back off a little bit. We're yeah, yeah exactly. So <laughs> quickly, the cat now one and one to crew. Crew see Chris. Watches that one down and low for ball two, two and one. Burgess seemingly is settled in in that second inning after getting roughed up a little bit in the first inning. They saw nine Warriors go to the plate. Only had to face four, though, in the second. Crew, the number four hitter in the lineup, walked and was stranded. Yeah, and his biggest adjustment on the mound has been just where his fastball location is. Uh, in the first inning, everything was up, and the Warriors were able to just see it up and uh, give it a good uh, – I mean, we had a couple line drives up the middle and stuff, so they were staying with it. But now he's gotten everything down a little bit, and uh, he's been able to work off that a little bit more. Crew C, Chris. That one high. Crew hitting 317. Talking with Crew last week, he was feeling under the weather. I talked to him when he came into the clubhouse – before the game, he said, I'm feeling better. He still didn't look like he was 100%, though. But definitely wasn't feeling as sick as he was on Friday. He had to gut that one out. He was white as a ghost when he got to the ballpark. He said he took a four-hour power nap just to get enough energy to try to play last week. <laughs> I don't even know if four hours is a nap. That's a that's a full night. That's a slumber, yeah. <laughs> and, and for the second time tonight, Seacrest, patient at bat, he draws the base on balls. Good idea with the 3-2 the uh, slider. Just needs to be executed a little bit more. He's leaving it up. He got Swenson on it, but uh, crew doesn't chase. Here is the pitch. Checking the swing. Ball one. Start your day with Scooter's Coffee in a hurricane. You're going out to Zion hiking this spring. You're going up there to Copper Rock to play some golf. Stop by Scooter's Coffee. They have protein shakes. They have great breakfast burritos, breakfast sandwiches, amazing drinks served amazingly fast. It's just amazing at Scooter's Coffee in Hurricane, proud sponsor of sports here on the network. You know, we, 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 we cover Region 9 here on the Fan Sports Network, and so I think it's really cool that we have businesses out even in Hurricane with the five other schools, mainly in St. George and then Cedar. So we love having Scooter's Coffee aboard. I went out to Copper Rock um, a couple months ago, and instead of going out the back way, I cruised through downtown State Street so I could just try it because I'd never been there when I saw they were a sponsor, and I loved it. It's good. Yeah. Really good. 2-0 the count now. This is the number five hitter in the Warriors lineup, the catcher Hayden Smith. He's already signed to go play Juco ball down in Arizona. Yep. Jackson Kirby signed there, too. Uh, was it Glendale Community Glendale, College? Glendale, yep, yep. They'll be swinging wood down there. Yep. I think Yates from Dixie also signed there, if I'm not mistaken. I think Yates is going to Did he change? CSI. Oh, is he going, going, going to CSI? Oh, yeah. Somebody on that Flyers team yeah, there's a, they, also they signed. a lot of, of Southern Utah guys. So. Well, there's good baseball down here. Mm -hmm. Now we got a meeting on the mound for the first time tonight. Here comes Coach Larson. And Burgess is going to get uh, Coach put that right hand on that left shoulder. He's not ripping the ball away here, so we'll see what he ends up doing. I think maybe maybe some adjustments, maybe a little calm down session there. And again, the meeting on the mound is over now, but brought to you by Luke Udy at American Family Insurance. Get a free quote, see how much Luke can save you on your home, auto, or life through American Family. Yeah, just a few adjustments probably. Um, I mean, his last two, the two guys on base right now, both of them are there uh, because of walks. He walked crew on uh, a full count, and then he goes four straight balls to uh, Smith. So, 
I mean, just calming him down a little bit. I mean, he's got four walks and two innings pitched. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, hey, man, relax. Pepper let, the your zone. Defense, let your defense help you out a little bit here. You got you got to force it any bag, get a ground ball, let's roll two. Three nothing the lead here, Snow Canyon. Nobody out in the home half of the third inning. Scheduled seven inning game. Burgess will see how he fares against Henderson, the DH who steps in from the left side. And that one high ball one. Henderson grounded out short tonight. And his first at bat, so he's 0 for 1. But again, mentioned coming in hitting 455 and has only played in seven games this year. He's a move in. And I hear that he's another arm that, if needed, they can pitch that throws 91 92. And a hot shot up the middle, and that's going to get through. It's going to be an RBI hit for Henderson. And Smith's going to stretch and dive head first to third, and he is safe. So runners on the corners, and it's 4 0 Warriors. And that's one right there. We're going to watch the replay on it. Nice. I mean, it's a little bit to the left of, uh, of the shortstop, Corey. But, I mean, still, as a pitcher, you got to want that. That's a, that's your double play ball right there, especially with how hard it was hit. That's a quick and easy flip to second base to roll that up. So that's a tough, that's a tough break for the Reds. And tonight's game brought to you by Red Rock Real Estate from Land to Luxury. Check out redrockrealestate.com. Excited to have Red Rock. Real estate partner with us on the 2024 high school baseball season. Region 9 tilt tonight. Warriors undefeated 6-0. They had their bye the first week of the season, so they have played two less region games than Cedar. And Cedar is actually looking for their first region win. They've had some chances, but have not been able to get one. And here is TK down the line. That's a fair ball. And Tate Kelly's going to turn and dig. One run will score. And they're going to hold the runner. It's going to be an RBI double for Tank. Good piece down there. Guts in, it gets an inside fastball. And that was, that was so close to being foul. But I think I might have saw a little bit of chalk flying up down there in, uh, in left field. And uh, the head coach is going to be heading out. And it looks like Burgess is going to be done after that one. Yeah, that's it for Burgess. We're going to have a pitching change brought to you by The Rink, skatetherink.com. Hey, they got karaoke's, they got live DJ's, good old-fashioned roller skating, arcades, tons of fun at The Rink. Summer punch passes are available right now to save big money. Something to do with the kids this summer. Learn more at skatetherink.com. We'll take a full time out while the warm-up pitches will tell you about the new pitcher when we come back here on the Fan Sports Network. Hi, I'm Jermaine Ojegma from The Rink, and I'm inviting you to come out and skate The Rink. The Rink is the hot spot in town for big group events and kid birthday parties. We now have a karaoke room and retro skate night every Friday night. Visit skatetherink.com to learn more and let the good times roll at The Rink. Indulge in luxury at Outdoor Living. Join us at the St. George Parade of Homes this week. Discover our exquisite patio furniture showcased in select homes. Elevate your outdoor living space with us. Visit our showroom today. Oh, hello, Italian nightclub from Jimmy John's. Ciao, freshly baked bread piled with Italian-style meats. Hey, hand-sliced veggies. Am I obsessed with this sandwich? Yeah. So what if I am? Jimmy John's. Order online or on the app. Hey, it's Sheldon Demke. Check out the latest episode of What's on the Menu, a behind-the-scenes tour of local restaurants. We'll see some of their favorite dishes and get an inside look on how these dishes are prepared. Check out this week's episode at stgeorgenews.com and click the shows on the menu tab. Warriors lead 5-0 as we welcome you back here on the Fan Sports Network. And they do have uh, Martin, the sophomore, in to pitch in relief of Burgess. Martin this year, 11 and two-thirds work. ERA is, is, is up there. And that's kind of a theme. The, the, the pitching has been the problem for Cedar. And anytime you're a winless team in a region, you know, you, you can look at the hitting, sure. But the pitching team ERA is 924 and Martin is above that this year. Five appearances, he's 0-1. But he does throw hard. He, watching his warm-up tosses, Ken, what do you see? It looks a little bit funky. I mean, he's, he's coming from kind of a, a sidearm angle with his arm there, and, and it, it's, it's definitely firm. So, um, 
Is it just a control thing, uh, and that's why his ERA is so high? Uh, I mean, to me, it looks like it would be a pretty, pretty deceptive arm slot as a pitcher. So, I mean, it'll if the Warriors can jump on him. I mean, they got nobody out right now, guys on second and third. So it's a big ask for him out of the bullpen. Andrew Lyon will step in. Hey, update brought to you by Nets on Fire. Trailblazers playing UNLV tonight, top of the fourth, and Trailblazers leading the Rebels three to one. Nice out of conference win for Coach Fate now on the Blazers. And Lyon watches that one miss for ball one. Meanwhile, Region 9 baseball scores Dixie out in front, five nothing over Hurricane. Same score as we have here. And still Pineview leading Crimson, one nothing. Nash Schroeder on the bump tonight. Schroeder, Schroeder's good. I mean, he surprised me a lot over there at Pineview. Uh, good arm, throws pretty hard, and uh, got, got some good off speed to go with it as well. So not a shock to see a pretty low scoring game over there. Of course, tonight, What's going on? Well, John Rahm is having the Masters Championship dinner at Augusta National tonight. <laughs> I saw what was on the menu. Did you see that? I did not. Actually, pretty good. There was one fish I'd never heard of, though. It's like some rare fish. I don't know. <laughs> not, a, not a big fish guy, but... I don't mind fish if it's, you know, it's the right sauce and mm -hmm. I'm in the mood, but I'd never heard of it. It's probably like some kind of red deep snapper just called something else. Hmm. And that one gets away, but they won't send Henderson from third. Not up five, nothing with nobody out. And Lyon now ahead in the count, three and one. So Martin into pitch and falling behind to the first batter he's facing. And looking so far, Martin's got a, some good bite on that slider. He's got a lot of break on it. Just not controlling it very well right now. He's got to start it more on the inside half of the plate. Uh, he's just throwing it away and staying away. Shot back up the middle, gloved by Corey. Corey, only play will be to first for a 6-3 put out. It'll be a fielder's choice RBI, though, for Andrew Lyon. Just right off Martin's glove, kind of changes direction a little bit, and Corey's able to stay with it and get a good, good throw, a nice strike over there to first and record the first out. But one run does score. Big hit in this inning was that line shot down the left field line by Tank Kelly, who's sitting over at third base. As Corbin Hafen, one for one tonight, steps in, takes strike one. Just a pretty night at the park. Perfect temperature for some ball and stick, huh, Cannon? Oh, yeah. You can't beat it. I mean, St. George, it's starting to heat up a little bit. As we get uh, closer into uh, May, it's going to start to really get hot, but right now is the perfect time. And Hafen lines that one softly into center field. Another RBI hit, and the Warriors tack another one on the board. Hafen is two for two tonight, and Tank Kelly touches home plate. Good piece of hitting there by Hafen. Stays within himself, gets a pitch middle in, and uh, just kind of inside out. That's that Derek Jeter approach right there. Hit the ball the other way for a nice little single. And now Swenson in top of the order for the Warriors. And now all of a sudden the Warriors got a chance to really break this open. Got three in the first. Didn't score in the second. Now already four runs plated here in the fourth inning. Or excuse me, the bottom of the third inning. And just missing out of the right hand of the pitcher for the Cedar Reds, Martin. Want to know the count? Martin not making not making terrible pitches out of the bullpen. Uh, nothing hit like super hard off of him, but uh, just getting some unlucky drops. Falling behind a little bit here. Hafen modest lead. And just inside to Swenson. Swenson singled and scored and then struck out. He's one for two. 3 0 count right here. Probably getting the take sign. 
as you want to get to that uh, 10 runs as quick as you possibly can. Especially in Region 9, you never want to leave a team hanging around. And lost him. And Makayo will head down to first base. Another walk given up by the Cedar staff. There was one, two, three, four. That is what, the fifth walk of this game. But the first for Martin. Hafen down at second after that RBI hit. And you talked about it earlier, Devin. I mean, if you're going to win baseball games, you got to, there's two things you need. You need somebody out there throwing strikes, and you need to make plays behind that guy. Um, if you're walking a lot of guys and you're making errors behind him, it's going to be tough, really tough to win ball games that way. So, and that's, that's kind of what we see here. We're looking at the score 7 0 for the Warriors, and uh, the Reds just. I mean, there's only one air that has been given to him, but there's a few plays that I think could have been made uh, by the Reds that didn't, and it's hurt him a little bit. Yeah, no question, and you're trailing 7 nothing, and, and now just one out here, bottom of the third, already four runs, half scored, and two on base for Damon Entz, one of the hottest hitters on this Warrior team as far as average goes. And there's a fastball for a called strike at the knees. Just quick update, you know, V has added a run in the fifth as they're now in the sixth. So Utah Tech still leading down in Vegas, three to two. Region nine alumni Aaron Morris is on the bump right now for the Trailblazers. Of course, he was part of those back-to-back -back state championships the last two years over there at uh, Snow, uh, Crimson Cliffs High School. Karsten Herman got the start tonight, Snow Canyon alumni. So how about that? For yeah. Staying in, staying in St. George, doing a good job. How, how did he do? What, when did he get taken out? Uh, just barely here in the, okay. in the sixth. That's a good quality start right there. Yeah. I guess UNLV, absolutely. Uh, thoughts and prayers to his little brother, Coden, who was involved in a car accident a couple days ago. Had to have some surgery, still in the hospital, but uh, they're hoping for a, a, a full recovery. Jeez, that's, that's, that's a scary situation. Yeah. I didn't yeah. know that. Yeah, it was... Uh, I've just been kind of following along from uh, Troy Herman and, and Tony, his wife's, you know, social media posts. I did send a text to Troy this morning saying, hey, just thinking of you guys and, and sending our best. And I'm sure people tighten it community. And mm -hmm. Coden played just yeah. last year for the Snow Canyon baseball team. So, and, and tragedy has struck before, obviously, KJ Hay with the drowning incident a few years ago. Yeah. Pop up into the Bermuda Triangle, and it's dropped, and a run is going to score. Throws up the line, and the Warriors make it an 8 nothing lead. That's a tough play going out. Do you give him a hit there? I'd be tempted to because it's an over-the-shoulder circus-type catch. I don't. I don't think that's a hit. I think. Uh, I think we're we're giving him an error on that one, and it'll be. We'll take a look. Yeah, the scoreboard's got an error. I mean, it's a tough play, but at the end of the day, you got to make it. You got to make it. Yeah. Looked like it just bounced off the thumb of the glove there. Um, throw came in just a little bit too late, and uh, I mean, once again. You got to throw strikes and you got to make plays, and that's kind of what's what's beating the Reds tonight. So E4 will score it, and Warriors make it eight nothing on the Wilkinson's House of Lighting scoreboard. Lighten it up tonight, and getting the shutout by Goats on the mound. So the number one team in the Region Nine standings, the number two team in the RPI 4A rankings looking pretty good. So is Dixie tonight against Turk, and they've added another one on the scoreboard over there. And the Flyers now, actually a couple more, they now lead Hurricane eight to nothing. Uh, one of their Nets on Fire scoreboard update is still Crimson and Pineview, and Pineview still leads one to nothing. Seems like that Flyer game is going just the exact same way that uh, this this Warriors game is going for us here. I mean, I think every time we've gotten an update, the scores have been the exact same. So, yeah, swinging a shot to second, hop eats him up. The flip to second is just in time for out number two. Boy, oh boy, they almost didn't get anything on this chopper. 
Yeah, I mean, he just he played it a little bit uh, rough. He's got to come up and charge that ball a little bit more. He got in between those two hops. Luckily, he was able to flip it over there to second as uh, Ants. I mean, to me, you got to be sliding on that play. Um, you slide into second base, maybe you beat it there. Um, so, I mean, with the score being 8-0 to zero right now, he's probably not going to get too much of an earful. But had this been, you know, a one-run ball game, he might be hearing it. Here's Cruz. Seacrest now trying to he led this inning off this is the number 10 batter to step in the batter's box here in the inning didn't he lead off he did I think so yeah no oh, screws up my book <laughs> gotta write another uh another yeah, inning just, in there just move it over but I got room I mean you get that's true. We don't we don't play nine. I used to keep book when I wasn't pitching in college, and when you went extras, it sucked because yeah, yeah, you you're running out of pages once you go into the I, I do the tenth. I I do love keeping the book though. In fact, when I went to Wrigley Field, me and my wife, we went out to to Chicago. It was our fifteenth anniversary a couple years ago. I guess six years ago now, and. It was over Memorial Day weekend, and, and we took the subway down, had some Giordano's pizza, and mm -hmm. did the whole Memorial Day street fair, and then went all the way down to Wrigley, and what did I do? I grabbed a score sheet, and I kept score the whole Cubbies game. Keeps you, keeps you involved. And I was like, what are you doing that for? I'm like, you want to learn how? I mean, I was first game <laughs> time at Wrigley, I just want to keep score. Yeah. And it was actually a, a kid from the suburbs that rode the the. Uh, to train up and he's like hey will you teach me so i spent like three innings the first three innings teaching this this <laughs> 12 year old kid how to keep score His parents brave to let him drive the subway up by himself to oh he's by himself by himself oh jeez. Yeah. <laughs> we were just uh up the first baseline kind of in the in the corner not 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 bad seats i haven't i haven't been to wrigley i need to i need to go and a hit and run there with two strikes and two outs on a full count pitch, and that's fought off by Seekers for new life. Yeah, I've never been to uh, Fenway. My son went to Fenway. I've been to, of course, Safeco in Seattle. Been to uh, Petco in San Diego. Been to the uh, the Rockies ballpark, the Angels ballpark. I've been to the Ravine, the Dodgers. Been to the Giants stadium. Been everywhere in, in California, swinging a miss. And Seacrest is down on strikes, and finally the inning is over, but not before they get a, a big, big outburst. Five runs on one, two, three, four hits and take a commanding 8 nothing lead over the Cedar Reds. We go to the fourth when we come back on the Fan Sports Network. In our From bold statements to subtle compliments, Wilkinson's House of Lighting will help you more fully enjoy all the different spaces in your home. Stop in and see what's new at Wilkinson's House of Lighting, a proud sponsor of Region 10 Athletics. This is Parker. This is Jason with Team D Auto Sales, supporting local sports for over 20 years. That's two decades. Come to Team D Auto Sales at 488 East St. George Boulevard or TeamDAutoSales.com. Yeah, yeah. Team D, Team D. Check out this week's edition of TGIF on stgeorgenews.com. TGIF is your weekend adventure guide to all the fun and exciting things going on in southern Utah this weekend. Find this week's edition at stgeorgenews.com and click the shows on the menu tab. Have a blast this weekend. Red Ledge's Dermatology and Med Spa, specializing in general and cosmetic dermatology, treating acne, rashes, warts, and more. They even do cancer screenings and offer a free chemical pill with your first appointment. So if you need dermatology, think Red Ledge's Dermatology, located just off Snow Canyon Parkway, St. George. Hey, back on your Tuesday night Region 9 showcase. And thanks to some of our great sponsors bringing you tonight's game. Later, we'll have our Johnson Pediatric Dentistry post game show. We'll hand out all of our awards and get you our Down East Furniture Statistics. They've got uh, the clothing line that's dropped, they've got the, uh, the furniture line that's dropped, the swim line that's dropped, all over there, 245 North Redcliffe Drive at Down East Furniture. The the big the box line right now eight runs on seven hits no errors for the Warriors no runs on three hits and they all came back to back to back in the second and they left the bases loaded but two errors and, and that was one of the uh, Team Diaz sales keys to the game that you commented earlier Cannon was you gotta play mistake free baseball if you're gonna beat Snow Canyon yeah I mean uh, it's it 
It's it was the exact same thing. They had that. That's what ended up losing in the game against Desert Hills, um, with those four airs. Backhanded, glove by line. He'll take it unassisted over the back at first base, one away. Yeah, with a team like Snow Canyon, who who really punishes mistakes. Um, like it, that last air, I think after that one, they ended up scoring two more runs after that in that fifth inning, or not in the fifth inning, but the third inning where they scored five runs. So they made it hurt, and uh, it really puts them in a big hole here. So Lunt grounds out. Bunnell will step in. He uh, lined out to right field. Is 0 for 1 tonight. Big cut by Bunnell. One thing that's always tough is after your team puts up a five spot, it's always tough to go back out because you've been sitting in the dugout uh, the whole time as a pitcher. And so it's tough to, to kind of get back in the zone. And so you have to, while you're in the dugout, you have to kind of zone out and go, all right, Forget about the five runs we just scored. I got to still pitch my game and uh, keep things rolling on the uh, on the defensive side. Bunnell, the senior, only hitting 242 this year. Swing and a miss, and it's a full count. And, and the thing, Cedar has one home run this year. That was from Giles, Crew Giles. Slow roller to second. Ince has it. Throw over to first in time. Actually, that's Ledger's ship now at second. Excuse me. He's playing everywhere. <laughs> they moved uh, They moved Ince out to left, and they put uh, Ledger at second. So two ground outs and quickly two outs. And Ludlow, the right fielder, who was one for one but was stranded. Had that uh, one out hit back in the second and Corey and Burge just followed with singles but they couldn't do anything after that that's the best scoring chance the Reds have had so far in this game and fooled them badly there to swing and a miss that's always good to go back to I like that sequence a lot he throws the first pitch slider it's way up there's no chance of him taking a swing at it and then as a hitter you're thinking okay he's not gonna throw me that again but then you throw him it again and he's completely fooled on it upstairs two and one Looks like he's sticking with the slider there. See if he throws another one. And a swing and a miss, strike two. Goats again tonight. Two strikeouts in the first, two more in the second, two more in the third. He's got six SNS mechanical strikeouts on the night. And make it seven, a swing and a miss. He puts him down, one, two, three, no runs, no hits, nobody left on base. And Warriors have the lead as we go to the middle of the fourth when we come back home half. And all Warriors, 8 nothing on the Wilkinson scoreboard here on the Fan Sports Network. Scooter's Coffee and Hurricane is the best way to start your day or get you through your day. From breakfast sandwiches to cinnamon rolls to amazing smoothies and, of course, coffee. Anytime is a good time to sip and smile Scooter's Coffee. Open seven days a week. Relatives coming to visit, not enough room, or maybe you're looking to host a family reunion and need a house with a pool. Well, Red Rock Vacation Rentals has got you covered. From two-bedroom condos to ten-bedroom luxury homes, they truly have something for everyone. Plan your perfect getaway or staycation. Visit stgeorgeutahvacationrentals.com. Asphalt. It's not something we think about much, except when it's in bad shape. At Holbrook Asphalt, we help cities, HOAs, and businesses avoid replacing painfully expensive roads and parking lots. To avoid the cost of replacing asphalt, you must effectively preserve it while it's still in good condition. University research has shown Holbrook Asphalt's HA5 slows asphalt aging by 67%. We make your pavement assets last longer, cost less to own, all while achieving higher property values. Visit HolbrookAsphalt.com to discover more. Back at the ballpark here, Snow Canyon High School leading Cedar 8-0 on the Fan Sports Network. Devin Dixon and Cannon Seacrest with you. Chris back in the Finley Studios in the Command Center, getting us in and out of breaks. And Sebastian running the camera tonight. And it's been all Warriors. Cannon, I mean, Goats has been great. He absolutely looked it tremendous and and it looks like he's just starting to get loose mm. he's been so efficient tonight he's just giving up those three hits but aside from that i mean seven punch outs you love what you've seen from kyson goats on the bump 
Yeah, seven punch outs in four innings. Those are those are great numbers. I um, mean, he's filling up the zone. You know, they're not they're not full count strikeouts. He's getting ahead quick and uh, getting it getting it done sooner. And he's not wasting a whole lot of pitches. Do we have his pitch count? Yeah, I mean, four innings, three hits, seven strikeouts, sixty pitches. Sixty pitches, and forty one yeah. of them have been for strikes. Yeah, yeah, he's working quick. And, and I don't think he's given up a walk. And again, we talked about his walk to strikeout ratio in the pregame show. He came into tonight, 35 strikeouts and five walks, and he has now got 42 strikeouts and still five walks. Yeah, making it, making it a really, uh, really big margin. It's going to be, it's going to be take a few bad games to, to lower that. Well, and here's the thing that's interesting is, is yeah, you can give Goats a break on a night. You can give Lion a break on a night. But how do you take these guys out of the starting rotation when Jackson Kirby comes back? And we're hearing that this week he's close enough to probably start pitching again for the first time in a live game. You, you, you're not getting a lot of innings out of Mikhail Swinson. You're, Tank Kelly last week got five and two-thirds in that 12-inning game against Crimson, which was more than he pitched all year. Yeah. You, 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 Henderson can throw. Cruz Seacrest just had to throw a little bit. I mean, there, there's pitchers for days on this roster. And until the state tournament, you really don't have enough reps to go around if you're Coach Seacrest. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing with high school baseball is a lot of the guys that you're going to need when you're making that run, um, they're just not going to get a whole lot of opportunities. I mean, even you have a couple closers and stuff. Talon Kelly hasn't seen a ton of time. I mean, he threw five innings against uh, Crimson in their last game. Uh, but had that game not gone into extra innings, I mean, he would have thrown, a th I think, a third of an inning. So, I mean, the biggest thing is is making sure they're all ready during practice and inner squatting and stuff. And there's a shot up high, but not deep enough to leave the park and circling underneath it, the left fielder for the Reds for the flyout off the bat of Henderson as leader out there makes the play. So yeah, like I, I mean, like I said, it's just during practice and stuff. You got to make sure that you're getting those guys innings, so that by the time they're they're ready for the state tournament, they're ready to go on the mound. And so that's what's important. You might not see them uh, in region at all, honestly. A lot of, or maybe you'll see, even see some guys throwing some JV innings as well that yeah. they might need. Yeah. So um, yeah, you got to get you got to get innings any way you can, whether that's inner squads or you know, just bullpens throughout the week. Tank Kelly, one for one tonight, ripped one down the left field line for an RBI double and walked and scored. So he has uh, got the makings of a little something-something, break out of a little bit of a slump at the plate. Gets himself into a nice count right here in a 2-0, looking for his pitch as well. Martin, the reliever. Breaking ball, and it does drop right over the top of the K zone for a called strike two and one. 2-0 breaker wasn't, wasn't, you know, sitting on that. He's looking for a fastball in a 2-0 count. So it just lets that one go. That one outside, snap throw down to first and back in time. Uh, that is a pinch runner for uh, Aiden Smith. That is uh, Roly, Roly out there to run. I can almost spot Roly because he's like six <laughs> three. I think he might be taller. I th six I'm, four? I'm about six three, and he's six five. He might be six five, six six. Yeah, he's tall. And that got Tank Kelly. I think didn't matter. Ball four or hit by a pitch. He's aboard. And now runners on first and second with one out. And now you start to look at the situation here. Cedar's facing. It's like you're down eight nothing. You give up two runs, and Snow Cannon goes and gets three outs, and this game is over. Yeah. You, you get you get ten run. Yeah. You definitely you definitely need to uh, to get out of this inning with with. I mean, you're you're hoping that nobody scores, um, but you definitely want to keep Kelly over there at first as best you can. Dixie continues to lead Hurricane 8-0 over at Flyer Field. And Pineview, over at Pineview High School, leading Crimson 1-0. And that one's a wild pitch. And both runners will advance 90 feet. Rally to third. Rally to third and tank to second. And now uh, Martin's got to refocus. Yeah, I mean, and that pitch was... Uh 
it was it was pretty pretty far outside. Uh, Boyer tried to um, like he, he dove for it basically and uh, wasn't able to stop it. Inside and that one hits the backstop so hard it comes right back to the catcher, <laughs> and so the runners cannot try to score. And I don't think they were going anyway with one out here. Martin getting a little wild here with the with the pressure right now. Uh, the pitch before that was way far out. This one way far in. Now looking for something in the middle. Downstairs, 3-0. 3-0, do you want to turn him loose here if he likes it? Or do you want to try to load him up? You, you, you got to try and load it up. I mean, if you had, if it was 10-0 to right now and you weren't, uh, weren't trying to get go for that uh, you weren't trying to go for that um, that tenth run then I think you'd you'd let him let him swing it away but uh, and coach Seacrest does not let Andrew Lyon swing there's taken all the way and it was a very hittable pitch down Broadway for strike one now he's swinging and roped and that is a hot shot off the tip of the glove and it's gonna be a two RBI double for Andrew Lyon who stands his second base yeah, I mean this this ball was hit so hard. Uh, we we missed it on the on the camera there. It was hit so quick, uh, but just just off of uh, third baseman Bunnell's glove, um, not going to be an error. I mean that's a that's a double for sure, but uh, it just hit super hard. He barreled that one up, didn't he? Yeah, that was that was hit very well. Well, and and the advantage was to Lion, right? He he'd seen a strike. You, you're down three one. You don't want to, you don't want to, you know, walk him and load him up. So he has to try to be around the plate, and the Lion made him pay. Yep. And here's the guy that's two for two tonight, Corbin Hafen, and he has to hop, skip, and a jump out of the way as that one was inside around his feet. And, and at this point, if you're Coach Larson, you don't have anybody warming up the bullpen. So if you're going to make a move, you probably would have already done it. Down ten nothing now. Mm -hmm. And so they're going to let Martin in. Now somebody does get out of the bullpen and, and race down to the bullpen area. Out of the, get out of the dugout and race the bullpen, I should say. And Martin misfires again 2-0. And, oh. and you know what? I, Martin's stuff is really good. His fastball, it's got a lot of two-seam run on it. So, I mean, he's, he's really good, just a little bit wild tonight. And that's, that's what's been hurting him the most. That pitch knee high, but off the plate. And ball three, and again, three and oh. And Martin's got to try to throw him a strike here. You do have an open base at first, though, but you're down 10 nothing now on the Wilkes and House Lighting scoreboard. And there's the fastball down Broadway. And that's down around the knees. I mean, if he can get it to where he's throwing that fastball and he starts, he comes out of the bullpen throwing like that, he's, he's going to be a tough kid to hit. Just a sophomore, Martin, still learning. Gotta be a complete pitcher and lost him. That one again on the shoe tops. Hafen has been on base all night long. This time via the walk. Yeah, and Goats hasn't walked anybody, and that is now what the sixth, seventh walk given up by the Cedar Reds pitching staff? Yep. I mean, uh, definitely Goats is commanding this game and uh, setting the pace. He's doing a great job on the mound, and uh, the Reds. I mean, he's getting he's getting help too from his from his offense as well. I mean, they're swinging it well. They got nine hits on the night. So, Crimson just scored on a wild pitch, and it's now tied one one. Little Nets on fire update for you. And the bases are loaded. They just walked Tyler West. So now Schroeder's got to work out a little jam, and that game is now tied. Again, we'll have the rematch between Crimson and Pineview on Friday. And that's a, that's that's one thing that's also changed. We talked about the RPIs changing, but before I was in high school, it used to not be that you play the same team on the same week. They used to play bouncing Later. around. So you would play Cedar on Tuesday, then you'd go play Desert Hills on, on Friday. And there's a hot shot up the middle. And Mikhail Swinson laces that one. It's going to be an RBI single, and it's 11 nothing Warriors. How about that swing of the bat by Mikhail? Yeah, just a, a good piece. Stays within himself, drives it right up the middle. Uh, good swing there by Mikhail. 
He is two for three with a walk, an RBI, and a run scored. So exactly what you expect out of your leadoff guy for Coach Seacrest. And here's Damon N stepping in. And still just one out. Already three runs played it here in the inning. We're in the bottom of the fourth. Yep, just one out, and uh, now you give uh, Goats a little bit of cushion coming into the uh, coming into the next inning. Uh, you got he's got one run that he can play with to uh, to get the ten run rule intact. So, I mean, he's definitely going for the shutout, but no question. It's nice to have that little padding there for you. Yeah, Kyson's used to pitching with the lead. One oh, that pitch missing to ends. And again, Martin falls behind in the count. Here's the one oh delivery. There's a strike. That looked like the slider. Yeah, I mean like I said, everything he throw everything Martin throws is pretty hard. Um as a sophomore, he's gonna be really fun to watch develop because there's not very many sophomores that, that throw like this, you know? And he's getting some varsity time as well. A lot of other sophomores are, are playing on the sophomore team. And way to stay back and just loop it into right field. And another RBI hit as that ball is cut off. And the Warriors lead 12-0. Now hitting for the Warriors. Yeah, just a good piece of hitting. Um, I mean, I know, I, like, I'm going to go back to Martin. I, I mean, I know he's getting, he's getting hit pretty well right now, but... Um, you know, just being a sophomore, it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to watch him develop and stuff. And I'm sure that uh, that that coach is uh, he's he's pretty happy about him. He's happy with his composure. You know, a lot of guys that would be getting hit like this might be showing a little bit of emotion, but he's just been getting back up there and throwing that thing. So That's a good observation. I, I I like what you said right there because I've been watching him, and you're right. It's just he, he's not reacting. He's not showing frustration. He's just. Pitching, just pitching on, trying to hit his spots. Yep, right back to work. And look, this is a good hitting Snow Canyon team. Mm -hmm. 363, the batting average for the team coming into this game tonight. Warriors now extend the lead out to 12 to nothing. 12 runs on 11 hits now for SC. And the shutout for Goats on the bump. 3-1 Mustangs now, so they've got the lead for the first to tie it, and then they've taken a 3-1 lead over at Pineview High School on the Nets on Fire scoreboard. 8 nothing still, Flyers leading Hurricane. Desert Hills lost out of region, playing on their bye week up against Provo. They lost today 4-2. to Utah Tech is playing down at UNLV. They, they gave up the lead briefly, but they've got it back now and lead 5-4 to four over the Rebels in the bottom of the seventh inning. And there's a walk drawn by Ledger Ship. Good patient A.B. And here comes Coach Larson. And I think that's going to be it for Martin. Yeah, he, he let him have as much run as he could. I think you got you got to go get him. So we're going to have a pitching change. We'll talk about it when we come back. Warriors lead 12-0 on the Fan Sports Network in our Boulevard Home Game of the Week. Discover elegance at the Awning Company. Join us at the St. George Parade of Homes this week. See our exquisite awnings featured in select homes. Elevate your outdoor space with us. Call for a free quote today. Did you know that it costs less to maintain your equipment than to repair it? Yet 90% of breakdowns are caused by system neglect. Give your heating, cooling, and plumbing the care they deserve. For all your air conditioning and plumbing needs, turn to the experts. Hey, it's Marco from Coral Canyon Golf Course inviting you to play the course with the best backdrop in Southern Utah. Make sure you get out and experience great golf for a great price at Coral Canyon. Visit CoralCanyonGolfCourse.com or call us at 435-688-1700 for your tee times. Need an appliance or two? AWP's got you. Check out the remodeled expansive showroom highlighting the cafe series with colors like matte black, matte white, and modern glass. Make your kitchen stand out. Come see the local boys at AWP across the freeway from the Bloomington Walmart. Back at the yard here on the Fan Sports Network. First of two baseball games we're bringing you this week. This one, all Warriors, though. Bases loaded, already up 12 nothing, And Cedars just got to get out of the inning. And they got to get some runs, or, or this game will be over 10 after 5. 
And they go to the new pitcher. And the new pitcher, to tell you about him, for the Reds, number four, that is the junior, Fieldstead, who's uh, played in three games and, and, and is hitting a little bit, hitting 333, not an everyday guy. But he has gotten shelled when he's when, in his one appearance. And in his one appearance, he gave up five hits, four runs, all earned. He, he did strike out two, but he gave up a home run, and he's only faced eight batters all year. So yeah. small sample size. And not a lot of walks. So, I mean, maybe that's why they're putting him in right now. Uh, had, a, had a lot of walks uh, early on in this game and uh, just kind of hoping, all right, we just need somebody to get out there and throw strikes. Crimson has added another run. They lead four to one over Pineview now. Uh, that game is uh, in the middle innings and is in the top of the fourth inning. We're in the bottom of the fourth inning, 12 nothing Warriors. And a called strike to Cruz Seacrest. There he is, filling it up. Crew to tonight walked twice, was stranded, then scored, and then struck out. 0 for 1. A little dirty bomb and a diving catch, and it's made out there in right field. It will be a sack fly at the end of the day, though, and it's 13 0 Warriors. What a catch out there. That's our Mountain Land Supply defensive play of the game. Just selling out, coming in. That's Ludlow, your right fielder, making a play. Kind of saw him on the replay there, kind of stab his glove at it there at the end because he was a little bit uh, away from it. But, I mean, that ball's got to be caught. Fieldstead did his job. He comes in, gets two pop flies, and uh, what, is, what, what does he have to show for it? He, he's, he's got three runs that he's given up in this one. Gets another, another one. Another pop up. And this was in the Bermuda Triangle again, and it's again going to be dropping and... Uh, another run will score from second base. It's now 15 to nothing. That one was a tougher play than the last one. Yeah. Because it was a little bit more of the, in the dirty bomb territory between everybody. Yeah, but I mean, it's still at the same at the same time. Fieldstead, you got to be thinking up there on the mound. Hey, I did my job. I, what 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 more can I do right now? Um, I mean, he's probably pretty upset. Well, they've only put one of the two errors on the board, but they, 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 they should, they should. Are they scoring that last one a hit and the one previous in error? Because it took a while and it just went on the board, so now I'm confused. I'm not sure. It's, I, to me, I'm a, I, I'm a pitcher's guy, so I, I, to me, those are, those are two errors, but um, I understand that people might say, oh, I didn't hit his glove, but I mean, they gave they they did score an error on the first one. The last one off the bat of Henderson, they've scored a hit. Yeah, but. I don't know. That's my that's my bias right there, Devin. Being a pitcher is, uh, I am not a huge fan of stuff like that getting scored a hit. Fieldstead, 
the delivery fouled off the bat of TK straight back tank tonight he is uh, one for three oh, no excuse me tank tonight is one for one he was hit by a pitch and then walked and got him on a strikeout looking. And finally, the inning comes to an end, but not before seven runs on three hits, an error, and they do leave a runner out there stranded on base. But the 10 run rule is in fact, Warriors just need three outs. Cedar needs six runs to extend this game. We'll see what happens when we come back on the Fan Sports Network own property and want to rent it then you need the right team with 11 years of local experience a staff of over 25 employees and a 4.9 google rating aim to maximize your rental income and find quality tenants while keeping turnover low to increase your revenue and truly maintain your property learn more at redrockpropertymanagement.com create your own relaxing comfortable space boulevard home offers the guaranteed best prices on furniture appliances mattresses and more and buy with no interest financing shop boulevard home because home is who we are. Did you know that St. George News has a new app? Download the St. George News app today and stay up to date on everything happening in Southern Utah. Get instant notifications on news, weather, sports, and more. Download the app today and get your local news now. Got a project at work or around the house? Well, think Bucks Ace Hardware. Think Bucks for all the top brands like DeWalt, Milwaukee, and Still. Plus, Bucks has the best sporting goods department. You've got to see their gun department. It's stocked with a great selection of guns and ammo and accessories. Two locations at the Dino Crossing in St. George or State Street in Hurricane. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Devin Dixon, Kansas Seacrest, and... Here we go, Jackson Kirby. We talked about him a little bit in the pregame. You know, that he, he was healthy enough to pitch this week, we were told. And they're going to get him a little work here with the Warriors leading big in this one. And Kirby just needing three outs. And Coach Seacrest, pitching Coach Brandon Lyons, saying let's get Jackson out there now that he's uh, healthy. Kirby throws gas, Cannon. Yeah, he's, he's, he's firm. And a fabulous Freddy's foul ball. Got a great changeup too. Really good changeup. I think I think it's better than than his uh, his breaking ball. 0-1 pitch and that one's lifted. Ledger ship going out at second and he will squeeze it and make the catch. And quickly one up, one down. And Kirby's first batter faced of the season. He induces a pop up to second base out there in shallow right center field. And that play right there, I mean. That kind of explains the game. Uh, Cedar was dropping those, and Snow Canyon's been able to wrangle those, and that's that's been a big part of why the Warriors have been able to get out to this big lead. Kirby, the right-handed pitcher for Snow Canyon, making a season debut. Chopper to crew at short, 6-3 put out. And one out away from a victory. Now, is it 15 to 0 or is it 16 to 0, Cannon? Um, the scoreboard out there says 15. I got 15 here, but I'm kind of just going off what they got out there. Game changers saying 16. Yeah. I'll bump it up. I just noticed that, that there's a discrepancy. I'm trying to go back in my mind in my book here and see. We'll check on it. Regardless, Snow Canyon's going to win this game. Yeah. And in convincing fashion. But it is good to see Kirby out there. I mean, a guy that was supposed to be uh, a starter coming into this, uh, this, this season. Get a little bit of time out on the mound. Yeah, I mean, I remember Coach Seeker saying, in the media day covers that they Jackson Kirby, Andrew Lyon, guys and go. He was talking about all his pitching and Kirby was one of the top guys he named and it's just here we are April the 9th and this is the first time we've seen him. Mm -hmm. And for the seniors probably been frustrating knowing he's not 100% healthy, but with somebody that's a, you know, experienced coach like Reed is and and you got Brandon Lyon who pitched in the big leagues knows the value of being healthy. I I think 
these kids, you know, he's already signed to play college baseball. I think it's the wise thing to not bring him out until he was ready to go. Yeah, and I was going to say that too. I mean, with a guy that's got a future to go on and uh, and play baseball at the next level, there's just there's just no reason to rush. I mean, I know it, Kirby, he wants to get out and compete and he wants to play, but um, when it comes down to it, the best thing for him is to. to and there's relax. a strikeout for Kirby, his first of the season, and that is the ball game. And Snow Canyon blanks Cedar tonight and wins it easily. Uh, the rematch will be Friday. It'll be a matinee game up there in the afternoon. But Warriors, all offense was clicking tonight. Everybody was contributing. Goats, he was great on the bump. And then Kirby mowing him down. A couple pop-ups there and then a strikeout to end it. And a wire-to-wire -wire victory. Warriors got three in the first. Got five more in the third. Got seven or eight more there. I mean, we have a discrepancy on the scoreboard versus the game changer. Uh, but I think it's 16 nothing. the final is what I'm going with. I think they missed one on the scoreboard. I've got 16. So Warriors blanking the Reds tonight. We'll take a final 60-second timeout. When we come back, we'll clean it all up. It's your Johnson Pediatric Dentistry postgame show. Stay with us. Warriors win. Inspired design. Ultra quiet operation. To you, it's a bright evolution cooling system. To us, it's the ultimate machine. All set. For the dealer nearest you, visit Bryant.com. We are Utah's financial outfitter, and we're here when it's time for your business to climb higher. Cass Valley Bank, mountains away. Member FDIC, equal housing lender. Your child's sports journey starts with the City of St. George Recreation. From their first steps on the quarter field to becoming a star player, our youth sports programs are here to develop talents and teamwork skills. So get out and play. Check out all the sports and get signed up at sgcityrec.org. Welcome back, everybody. 16-0, Warriors blanked the Reds tonight in our Boulevard home game of the week. And boy, oh boy, wire-to-wire -wire win. Uh, Cannon, Snow Cannon's really good. 7-0 now in region, undefeated. And, of course, um, you know, this. it doesn't matter how you win. Like, the 16 runs, the shutout, that doesn't impress the RPI the way they rate it. Uh, but, but we know this Snow Cannon team is going to be a threat at the state tournament to win it all after coming up short last year in the state championship game. And uh, C Coach, Coach Seacrest has got a bunch of rings, and he wants another one with this year's squad. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, they definitely have the ability to do it. I mean, playoff baseball is always crazy. Um, every year there's something that – some big upset that happens. So, I mean, it, it's it's – it really takes a, a good run towards the end. So they're playing hot baseball right now, but, um, you know, when it comes down towards the end of the season, that might not be the case. But if they can keep it rolling, they definitely have a chance with the squad that they have out here tonight. What impressed you the most about Snow Canyon? Was it the offense, the defense, the pitching, uh, the, mis the mistake-free baseball, the situational stuff? I mean, there's so many ways you could you could spin this as such a positive for Coach Seekers. They're supposed to win against Cedar. They're supposed to 10-run Cedar. They haven't won a region game. They haven't lost a region game. But you still got to go out and do it. Yeah, I mean, I, I think the most impressive part was definitely the pitching side of things. I mean, 16 runs. Don't get me wrong. That's that's a big uh, that's that's big on the offensive side. But there was a lot of errors and a lot of things that Cedar did not so well that allowed the Warriors to be able to to put up those kinds of numbers. But if you look at pitching, I mean, Kyson Goats, seven strikeouts, zero walks. We talked about his walk and strikeout differential pretty much the whole game, and um, he's just he's just unbelievable out there. Um, Four innings pitch, three hits, and then uh, Jackson Kirby, we got to see him tonight, was supposed to be one of the starters for the Warriors going into the going into the season. Ends up getting his first inning here, uh, coming off of some injuries and stuff, and he goes one inning pitched, a couple ground outs, and a punch out as well. So eight strikeouts in five innings, I mean, that's huge, and that's 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 what's going to propel these Warriors to, to getting to that state championship and winning one eventually. Um, that they need their pitchers. All right, we'll get some highlights for you here in our Johnson Pediatric Dentistry postgame show. Dr. Cody and staff make your kids feel right at home with all their dental needs. Don't forget, 
uh, your, your new patient special, if you've never been in, had your kids in, the exam, the cleaning, the x-rays for new patients is $79, and this one started in the daylight. We end with the lights down, but we ended up for five, 16 nothing Warriors. A big start to this game offensively, and Goat's good on the bump. As we um, look at some highlights, let's start talking stats brought to you by Downing's Furniture. We'll start handing out some awards as well. Um, I think I know what the Mountainland supply defensive play of the game is. That that sliding catch out there by Ludlow in right field, I think for Cedar, that was one of the highlights. And there wasn't many for the Reds, but I think we can make that our Mountainland defensive play of the game. Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think it was a good play. He was deep right field, kind of a ball that was hit shallow right center, came a long way and laid out for it. And at the same time, and they, at the time, I think they were down 13 to zero. So, I mean, it's good to see that some people are showing a little bit of heart out there. So why not give him the defensive to play of the game. Yeah, uh, you look at uh, the Warriors, they, they got it going with three runs in the first inning. Ryder Harrison, a two RBI double, but but he left the game, um, you know, tweaked something, and, and Ledger Ship came in for him. You hope Ryder's okay long term. That was really the only negative of the, of the entire game tonight, is you, you hope Ryder's going to be okay. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it didn't end up hurting him in tonight's game, but uh, you definitely want to get him back and in the lineup, because he is a very dangerous hitter, and and uh, he swings it really well and is a big part of this offense that the Warriors have. Uh, let's go with our appliance wholesalers plus playmaker play of the game. I, I like um – I think that, that double down the line by Tank Kelly. You know, game's still in reach for Cedar. TK's trying to break out a little slump, and he absolutely roped one inches fair. I, I, I loved that one. I love that rip shot past the bag at third by Andrew Lyon later in the game, too. Those uh, those hits really, you know, stand out. Obviously, Harrison's, uh, you know, single, two RB single off the wall that I just mentioned. Those those are the three big hits that kind of stand out mm -hmm. in a game where there was double-digit hits tonight for SC. Every Everybody was getting in on the hit parade. Yeah. I mean, we'll give it to Talon. I mean, like you said, that ball was just barely fair. Getting him out of a slump um, and a big time in that game. I mean, I, I can't remember exactly what the score is. I think it was like 5-0 or something at that time. So definitely uh, within punching distance. And that one kind of kind of put the Reds out. Yeah. And Talon would later come around to score. And uh, all of a sudden, before you know it, it's 8 to nothing after three. Warriors then at eight more in the fourth inning. Uh, you look at uh, Swinson tonight, two for three with an RBI and two runs scored. Damon Ince, two for four with two runs scored and an RBI. Harrison goes one for one with two RBIs. Um, you know, you had, you had uh, Hayden Smith go one for two with two ribbies. Uh, Henderson, two for four with two RBIs. TK, one for two with an RBI. Andrew Lyon goes one for three with three RBIs. And uh, Corbin Hafen, two for two, and an RBI and two runs scored. That's two games in a row. Hafen hasn't got out in a, in a baseball game here at Snow Cannon High School. Yeah, I mean, coming out of the nine hole, that's that's huge. You know, usually when you're thinking stereotypical, you're thinking the nine hole is probably uh, not your best hitter. But, I mean, he's been doing a really good job of rolling that lineup over and getting the leadoff up again. Uh, let's pick our friendly superstar of the game. Uh, is it Kyson Goats tonight? I'm going to give it to Goats. I, I like pitchers, and, uh, you know, you can't say a single bad thing about his game. He threw strikes. He worked fast. No walks. Seven punch outs. You got to give it to him. Yeah, only, only, only worked four innings. Yeah. And only threw, what, 60 pitches? Yep, exactly. Threw 41 for strikes. So um, 42 strikeouts to five walks now on the season for Kyson Goats as he grabs another win. Yeah, I mean, Glendale – or, uh, I, I believe he's going oh, – I can't remember. What, he's going to some school. Northern but, California. It's uh, a JUCO in California. Is it College of Siskiyou? I can't remember where he's going, but I, I'm sure his coach is looking at that right now, and he's loving it, and he's getting excited for him to come up and play for him. Uh, for Cedar tonight, uh, just those three hits in the second inning, um, and, and they left the bases loaded. You, you kind of wonder, would it have mattered if they would have capitalized when they had the bases loaded against this team and this pitching staff? I'm not sure they would have had enough, but at least would have got the shutout broke up mm -hmm. if you could have capitalized. They had a chance to send a runner um, on, on a couple of those hits. They had three in a row, but ended up holding everybody up. And that was Ludlow and Corey and then Burgess that, that all had the three hits and all happened in that second inning. And really that was the only time that they had really put up up a, a, 
a, a rally uh, against the Warriors tonight. And, uh, I mean, like we were talking about it and when it happened, we were like, oh, he should have sent him, he should have sent him. But, you know, looking at it tonight, um, 16, 16 to 1, 16 to, to 1. Uh, I mean, it doesn't really it doesn't really matter. One more word, our Jersey Mike sub of the game. Uh, is, it, is it Kirby tonight? First time he's pitched all year, two flyouts and a, and a strikeout. Uh, good to see him healthy yeah. and on the bump. Just pitched uh, to three batters, but got all three of them out. So let's go with our Jersey Mike sub of the game, Jackson Kirby. That sounds good to me. This has been a Johnson Pediatric Dentistry Post Game Show. Our Finley Superstar of the Game, Kyson Goats. We give Tank Kelly our AWP Playmaker Play of the Game for that line shot down the line. And, uh, of course, our Mountain Land Supply Defensive Play Game. We went with the diving catch out there in right field for the Cedar Reds right fielder Ludlow. 16-0, Warriors win it. And they will have the rematch Friday afternoon up in Cedar City. And the Warriors now 7-0 and on the season in region play and 15-3 and overall this year. And it'll be interesting. Dixie has already won 10-0 over Hurricane tonight. So can win 16-0. So it goes down to, like, opponents, opponents, and opponents, opponents win percentage to see who's number one in the RPI after these games get posted. So, uh, of course, Dixie and Snow Cannon both one and two. Uh, we'll see if they flip-flop tomorrow or not. Um, by the way, uh, one final score before we sign off. Uh, they're in the top of the ninth, and Utah Tech is beating UNLV tonight 5-4 to four down in, in Las Vegas. And Crimson, after trailing one nothing, finally solved Nash Schroeder, and they now have a 5-1 to one lead over the Pine View Panthers. That one's uh, heading to the sixth right now. So those are your latest score updates. But the Warriors win it here tonight. This has been the Johnson Pediatric Dentistry Post Game Show for Sebastian, for Chris back in the Finley Studios. For Cannon, I'm Devin saying good night from Snow Cannon. We're on the Wilkinson scoreboard, 16-0. Warriors stay perfect in Region 9 baseball. Good night from Warrior Field.